So let's talk about agile product development. And what I want to do is try to convince you that the experience I had in Startup 1 and Startup 2 was not just my idiosyncratic experience, but in fact uh, represents a kind of a larger trend. And so I'll do that by showing what I went through schematically. And I'll just a point of disclaimer, since I know not everybody here is interested in software startups per se, uh, let me just say that that is my experience, but I think these principles uh, have broader applicability, as I said at the beginning. But I also want to say, and I don't mean to be melodramatic, but I do believe that the future survival of our civilization depends on our ability to reliably ship new kinds of software. <laughs> Why? Because every product in the industrialized world is either contains software in it now or is built with software assist. So if we accept the same kinds of failure rates that we've gotten used to in the software industry uh, globally, then I think we're in real trouble. I don't think we'll have to wait for robots to take over our civilization. Uh, we're doomed anyway. That's a digression. It's traditional in a talk about uh, development methodologies to beat up on the waterfall methodology. This is kind of the traditional way people were taught to build products. This is how I was trained as an engineer, so I will. Um, waterfall is this idea that you take uh, a product idea, you turn it into some kind of requirements document, then you collect specifications, you uh, build a design for it, you implement it, you hand it off to some kind of QA function, and then it enters into maintenance mode. So a fundamentally linear batch and queue way of building products. And although that's fun to, build, to beat up on, because of course this is what makes achieving failure possible, because you're getting all this positive feedback about how you're advancing the plan, even when you're advancing the plan off a cliff, it's actually important to understand that waterfall is an appropriate methodology to use in a certain context. The context when both the problem and the solution you're trying to solve are relatively well understood. When you can model what's going to happen in the future, you want to do this. The issue is that in almost all high-tech product development, this is not true. So if you look at the academic research on, for example, I don't know, IT projects that are built using waterfall, something like six out of ten of them fail outright. Think about that. The lucky four out of ten are the ones that come in way late and way over budget. Six out of ten never finish. They just enter the batch size death spiral and you never hear from them again. So luckily as an industry we've been working on doing something better. It's called agile product development. And the insight of agile is that we can eliminate kinds of waste from our development process in waterfall. For example, when you build a specification document that goes stale or you, know, you have a meeting where you accomplish nothing, or you, know, you build extra APIs that you might need in the future but then actually wind up not needing them. All that's waste. And so what we want to do is build the product itself iteratively so that um, we change our unit of progress from just advancing to the next stage to creating a line of working code. So like the canonical extreme programming example, extreme programming is an agile methodology uh, as diagrammed here, is something like a big company needs a new payroll system. And so when you're building payroll, you don't really have to ask what problem are we trying to solve. Okay, every company makes payroll or it's going out of business pretty soon. And so what you would do in you know, traditional waterfall, even those projects fail. But under Agile, we would actually collapse the feedback cycle time. So we would take an in-house customer, a product owner who knows a lot about payroll, and we'd sit them next to the engineers who are building the product. So if they have a question like, how does deferred amortization work? Or how should this screen look? Or like, what is payroll? Seriously, how does it work? They have somebody they can turn to and get an authoritative answer. Excuse me, in-house customer, can you explain this to me? And they can have a dialogue on the spot at the moment that the question arises. And so under Agile, we can do big IT projects substantially better because we're living in a world where the problem is known, it's the solution that's unknown. And if only startups lived in this world, uh, we'd be fine. But of course, this is what it looks like uh, in startup land, where both the problem and the solution is unknown. So let's say you want to do extreme programming. Who are you going to sit next to the engineers if you don't even know who the customer is? Startups face this problem that there is no authoritative answer yet to the questions they want to ask. And so what they need to do is combine an iterative process of customer development with an iterative process of agile development tied together in a company-wide feedback loop. And what's interesting about this is it changes the unit of progress in an interesting way. 